Well, do, do you want to hear the real story um, uh, from Vlad from Robin Hood about what happened this week with GameStop? Sure, go for it. Okay, you need to like let him somehow click on a button so he can talk. Vlad, uh, can you hear us? Vlad the Stock Impaler. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, thanks for uh, thanks for inviting me up. It's good to hang with all of you. All right, Vlad, was... what really happened? Give us the inside scoop. All right, well, I was actually hoping that uh, you would invite me up for the Fermi paradox part because um, this has been a very surreal weekend and week for me. One of the really great things is all the people coming to uh, coming out of the woodwork to offer support for the company, offer you know advice. So I got introduced today, um, and actually I should say I just randomly downloaded Clubhouse a couple of days ago just to see what it was all about. So this is my first time literally using the app. I uh, I got introduced to. Uh, your friend Antonio Elon, who had some good advice for me, and then introduced me to you. You had some great advice, and then I figured, you know, I heard about this clubhouse, and uh, this has got to be part of the simulation. So I just uh, thought, why not? So here I am. So I'm a I'm actually um, I'm actually an adherent to the simulation hypothesis. All right. Well, full of beans, man. What happened last week? Why do you? Uh... Stop people. Why can people buy the GameStop shares? The people demand an answer and they want to know the details and the truth. Yep. Yep. Okay. So let me let me start by giving a little bit of background. So I'm the chief executive of Robinhood. Robin yeah, is actually a <laughs> just go I'll, on, I'll go through this quickly. Just don't worry. This is this is uh this is important. It's actually uh, a couple of companies. So there's a an introducing broker dealer uh, called Robinhood Financial, and that basically is the app that you uh, know and love. It processes trades. You're a customer of, of Robinhood Financial. Then there's a clearing broker dealer, um, Robinhood Securities, that clears and settles the trades. And then we have Robinhood Crypto, which is our crypto business, um, all of which, uh, all of these are kind of different entities that are differently operated. So basically Wednesday of last week, uh, we just had, you know, unprecedented volume, unprecedented load on the system. Uh, a lot of these, you know, so-called meme stocks were, you know, going viral on social media and people were, um, people were joining Robinhood and there was a lot of net buy activity on them, as you guys all know. And Robinhood at this time, I think was number one on the iOS app store and uh, pretty close, if not number one on, on Google Play as well. So just unprecedented yeah. activity. Um, and so Thursday morning, right? So I'm, I'm sleeping, but at 3.30 a.m. Pacific, our operations team receives a file from the NSCC, which is the National Securities Clearing Corporation. So basically as a broker, as a clearing broker, um, and this is where Robinhood Securities comes in, we have to put up money to the NSCC based on some factors, including um, things like the volatility of the uh, of the trading activity, concentration into certain securities, and this is this is the equities business. So it's based on stock trading, uh, not options trading or or anything else. They gave us a file with a deposit, and the the request was around three billion dollars, which is, you know, about an order of magnitude more than what it typically is, right? No, no. Why why and, was that so high? Like this seems like like. It sounds like this is an unprecedented increase in uh, demand for capital. What formula did they use to calculate that? Well, yeah, and just to give context, you know, Robinhood up until that point has raised, you know, a little bit around two billion dollars in total uh, venture capital up until now. So it's a big number, like three billion dollars is is a large number, right? Basically, the and you know, I the details are. We don't have the full details. It's a little bit of an opaque formula, but there's a component called the VAR of it, which is value at risk. And that's based on kind of some fairly quantitative things, although it's not it's not fully transparent. There are ways to reverse engineer it, but uh, it's not kind of publicly shared. And then there's a special component which is discretionary. Um, so that's that kind of acts as a multiplier, basically. It's discretionary, discretionary meaning like it's just their opinion. Yeah, uh, it's it's a little bit. I mean, I'm sure there's there's definitely more more than just their opinion. Basically, well, I mean, I, I guess like it's what based everyone, on growth. What everyone wants to know, what everyone wants to know is like, did something maybe shady go down here? Like, like it, it 
it's like it seems weird that you'd get a sudden ten billion dollar demand, you know, three billion, three, three, billion. three in the morning. Sorry, how much? It was three billion U.S. dollars. Three billion. Okay, so three billion yeah, around. You know, just suddenly out of nowhere. What I wouldn't, I wouldn't impute, I wouldn't impute shadiness to it or anything like okay. that. And actually, you know, the NSCC was reasonable subsequent to this, and you know, they've been, they've been, they worked with us to, um, to actually lower it. So um, it was unprecedented activity. You know, we don't, I don't have the full context about, you know, what was, what was going on on in what's going on in the in the NSCC to make these calculations yeah essentially is anyone, it was is a large anyone holding you hostage right now uh, no no Blink i'm twice. okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah um thanks for asking but anyway so this was uh this was obviously nerve-wracking and i actually was asleep at this point you know the operations team was fielding this at at three o'clock and then um you know we got back we put our heads together. You know, our chief operating officer basically said, look, let's call up the higher ups at the NSCC and kind of figure out what's going on. Maybe there's some way we can work with them. And um, basically there was another call and they lowered it to something like one point four billion dollars uh, from three. Okay. So, OK, we were making some progress. Right. And then, <laughs> but it's still a high number. And then um, we basically proposed, well, let's let's explain how we plan to let's explain how you know we'll manage risk in these symbols throughout the day. We propose marking these volatile stocks that were kind of driving driving the activity, position closing only. And then um, at about uh, an hour before market close market open. So 530 or five in the morning, they came back and they said, okay, uh, the charge is or the deposit 700 million, which we then deposited and paid promptly. And then, um, everything was fine. So that, that okay. essentially explains why we had to, we had to mark these symbols position closing only. And also why, you know, we didn't want to, we knew this was a bad outcome for customers. You know, part of what's been really difficult is Robinhood stands for, you know, democratizing access to stocks and yeah. we want, we want to give people the access. So that's been very, very challenging. Um, but we had no choice in this case. We had to conform to our regulatory capital requirements. And so the team did, uh, did what they could to make sure we were available for customers. Who controls this, this, this organization, this clearinghouse? Um, you know, it's a, it's a consortium. It's not, it's not quite a government agency. Um, you know, I, I don't really know the details of, of, uh, of all of that, Okay. but you know, and to be fair, like we were, we were, uh, I, I think there was legitimate, sort of turmoil in the markets like these are unprecedented events with these meme stocks and you know there was a lot of activity so there probably is some amount of extra risk in the system that warrants higher higher requirements so it's not entirely unreasonable but we did operational processes to make sure that customers that had positions could sell their open positions because obviously restricting someone. We got a lot of questions about, okay, you had to restrict buying. Why didn't you also restrict selling? And the fact uh -huh. of the matter is yeah. people get really pissed off if they're holding stock and they want to sell it and they can't, right? So I think that's, that's categorically worse. So, and lots of other brokers, I think were in the same situation. Robinhood was in the news, but you, you sort of heard this industry wide, right? other brokers uh, basically restricted the same exact activity. All right. So, so it sounds like this this organization you know, calls you up and they basically have a gun to your head, either either hand over this money or or else. Um, and so because I mean, like basically what people are wondering is like, did, did you sell your clients down the river or do you have no choice? And if you had no choice, that's understandable. But then, you know, we got to find out why you had no choice. And who are these people that are saying you have no choice? Yeah, um, I think that's fair. You know, we have to comply with these requirements financial institutions have requirements you know the 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 formula behind these requirements i think it would obviously be ideal if there was a little bit more transparency so we could plan better around that you know but to be fair we were able to open and serve our customers and you know 24 24 hours later um our team raised over a billion dollars in capital so that when we when we did open, uh, 
well, when we do open tomorrow morning, uh, we'll be able to kind of relax the stringent position limits that we put on these securities on Friday. Will, will there be any limits? Well, I think there's always going to be some theoretical limit. Like we don't have infinite capital, right? Okay. And on Friday, there were limits. Um, so there's always there's always going to have to be some limit. I think the question is, you know, will the limits be high enough to the point where, you know, some... They, they won't impact, you know, 99.9 .9 plus percent of customers. Um, so, you know, if someone were to deposit a hundred billion dollars and, and decide to trade in one stock like that, that wouldn't be possible, you know? All right. All right. Well, I guess people really just want to know, you know, if you had no choice, then you, then you had no choice. Uh, if you gun to the head situation, then that's understandable. But then whoever put that gun to your head, should you know be willing to answer for the public yeah listen and uh you know i know there's there's processes this is unprecedented times and to be fair to those guys okay. they've been they've been reasonable so we are i think the the one thing that is maybe not clear to people is robin is a participant in the financial system so we have to work with all of these counterparties so we do get a lot of questions about you know why do you work with market makers? Why do you work with clearing houses? Vertically integrating and getting, I mean, it's hard enough to, to build a introducing and a clearing broker dealer. Not too many people have done that. But the financial system that uh, allows customers to trade shares um, is sort of a complex web of multiple parties. And, you know, it's, it's hard to I think everyone says oh, it could be better, it could be improved. It's it's just the necessity of, of trading equities in the U.S. that you have to do all these things. I mean, to what degree are you beholden to Citadel? I mean, like, like basically, if Citadel is unhappy, then, are, are you, what, then what happens? Yeah, so that, you know, there was a rumor that Citadel or other market makers kind of pressured us into doing this. And now that, that's just false, right? Market makers execute our trades. They execute trades of, of every broker dealer. You know, this was this was a clearinghouse decision and it was just based on the capital requirements. So okay. from our perspective, you know, Citadel and other market makers weren't involved in that. But wouldn't they have a strong say in, in who got put in? In charge of that organization since it's an industry consortium not a government consortium or not a government regulatory agency um i i don't have any reason to believe that i think that's just like you know then you're getting into kind of the conspiracy theories a little bit so i just have no no reason to believe that that's the case you know okay all right um well i um, guess uh, so we'll see what happens with future action hopefully that wow. was insightful or you know, at least a little bit entertaining are you not entertaining <laughs> yeah first of all vlad Thank you so much for jumping on. I know it's pretty late and uh, thank you so much. You know, deep, you know, I deeply appreciate it. And I'm sure everyone in the audience here and watching elsewhere deeply appreciate it. So thank you so much. We really appreciate this.